Hi traders and welcome to Pepperstone's Technical Analysis Market Wrap on the 24th of July. So I've seen some really, really good moves this week. A lot of the majors have broken out of their zones that we've been stuck in for the last few weeks and gold finally went to the promised land. So we'll break down some of those trades and see if we can identify anything for the coming week. All right, so we'll start with the uh, Aussie USD. It's been one of the standout trades this week. It, it basically jumped out of that range. It, it's been hovering in for the best part of two or three weeks. The good thing about this trade was it actually did give um, an opportunity to get in. If you break it down to a smaller time frame, you can see the range that we were talking about. Um, yeah, it definitely came back into it, onto the 20 um, that we love. Your stop losses always go behind the 50 moving averages, you know. So any of these trades that you could have got into on this one, on the pullback and the retest of this zone, would have got you in. Um, it's just one of those ones that it really did explode. Yeah, this is a four hour. So these are four hour candles. You can see, obviously this day was a really, really big day. When you take it out to the to the daily, that's the candle that we're talking about there. But the good thing is you did get your entry point. Like even on the, the daily, you can see that that did close above that resistance that we were talking about out of the channel. And that was your entry signal. So when they do break out this um, hard and aggressive. It's yeah. You know, sometimes it it can be a little bit rare that you actually do get an entry point before it actually does explode, and sometimes it's a little bit too um, far gone by the time you get in. But in this particular instance, we um, yeah were able to get in. So hopefully everybody caught that one and had your alerts set because it was one of those ones we've been watching for a while. So good trade. Um, basically hit the seventy yeah seventy one eighty, which is pretty standard for it. Um, if we take it out, we've got to take out a fair bit to actually see where that actually was. You can see that we've got yeah, a little bit of support and resistance here. Nothing extraordinary. The 200 I would have thought would probably be the first real point of conjecture for it, which is around the um, that 72 sort of 50. So I think it's got a little bit more legs in it if it does start to wind up. But we've got to go to the smaller time frames now and um, yeah, see if we can get a, a retest of potentially this top zone here. Maybe at around that 70. 50 area if it comes back down there and tests these tops again uh, could be a good reload zone to uh, maybe take it a little bit further but we've got to wait for a confirmation of a smaller time frame change of trend of course so we'll go on to the us dollar cad uh this has been as weak as water um you can see here it's been just a, a week of effective selling really uh it broke the 200 the 200 is not able to support uh, it anymore. The 20 was certainly pulling it down and you can see when the two were uh, gravitating towards each other, uh, price just forced uh, down. The dollar index paints a very similar story and we'll have a look at that uh, a little bit later on, but it's basically a replica um, of what this has done. So it certainly came down to the, the test the real test zone that I thought um, it had in, uh, we were talking about this earlier in the week, was around that 133, sort of 80 area. So I'll, I'll, I'll pop that there. Um, and that's mainly because of the previous support and resistance. Like you can see that that was um, uh, an interesting point for it there. It came back and touched it. It, it went um, just a little bit past the uh, 133.80. So it hit our target on the way down. But you can see this nice hammer. Uh, that has formed off that base now. So, and you're getting really, really good MACD divergence on the daily. So, yeah, quite distinctive MACD divergence um, on that low. It is an important zone for it, the 133.80. So, although it's been a very, very weak, um, I guess, trade this week, I can imagine that it will probably find a little bit of, a um, little bit more support here. It's got a good candle coming off a really, really strong base. So, and it hit the target we were going for anyway. So realistically, um, I don't really want it this to go any lower um, because then it, it starts to get a little bit um, scary really for support and resistance zones. I'd like this part to hold up. So the ideal trade here would be a smaller time frame change of trend to take it long back into the 200. I'm not convinced uh, it's done on a short, but I'd like to see it pull back to uh, maybe the 20 and the 200 at least before it uh, has its next leg down. So that's, that makes an ideal trading situation. We need to go to a smaller time frame, of course, to see a change of trend, um, say, say for an hour. I mean, ideally a four hour would be ideal. If we saw a, a change of trend on a four hour, that'd be great. But uh, we'd probably have to settle for a one hour change of trend on this one. So if we make a lower uh, low here and then make a new high, break past these moving averages, that will probably be enough for me to um, yeah, potentially long it to that longer area that we talked about. MACD divergence is starting to kick up a little bit for it. So yeah, it's promising. So um, certainly one to keep an eye on. But you know, it does have to make a new high on the one hour above these moving averages for me to be convinced that, um, yeah, this is going long. And if it does go long, um, the obvious target will be the 20 and the uh, 200 moving average on the daily. All right, so 
we'll head on over to the Euro now. Uh, the Euro has been another one of the big stars this week. It's been you know, a real shoot up off the 20. You know, we've talked about this for a little while. It was a little bit messy there for a while, but it found good support on the 20 and now it's just really you know, rocketed up. The interesting thing about this one is it has hit a very, very important zone. Now, the 116 uh, for the Euro is very uh, important and we have to go out to a weekly really to even see it. But um, if we do the, we'll do a horizontal line at 116 and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Okay, so, I mean, it's obviously hit it now and it's just sort of finding its way around it, but you can see it was really, really important um, support here. Um, it was support here and, you know, it was resistance at a couple of these little points here, but it did provide a lot of support at this level. Now, remember, this is a weekly chart, okay? So every one of these touches is three weeks worth of price action. So you've got, yeah, three weeks worth of price action there. You've got effectively... You know, the best part of three months worth of action in this period here. So it's a very, very important zone for it. It would be highly unlikely, I would think, that it would be pushing up much higher without a, a retest of one of these levels. I mean, coming back down to maybe the 115 or 114 at the very at the very least, um, we'll draw a new fib. I'll get rid of this fib and we'll draw a new one and see. We'll just mark what we'll do. We'll mark this swing only, okay? So because that's, that's the most relevant swing. So... Yeah, even according to this, what we'd want to see is a pullback probably, I'll go to a, a different color line, probably around that sort of 38 to, to 50 levels or around this level here would be ideal. Um, and that's around the 114, probably to 114.50 if it went to the 38.2. That would be an ideal, this whole zone here would be an ideal pullback level. I think it needs to do this before it pushes much higher. It's it's unlikely that it would push past a really strong uh, roll reversal zone without having some sort of a pullback. So I would be looking, yeah, before going along on this one, probably looking for a pullback to around this level here and then look for that smaller time frame change of trend and try and get that. I think with a, um, another good leg up, it could certainly do it. When you look at it on a weekly um, point of view, MACD's crossed to the upside now. You can see we've got a moving average crossover, 2050, very, very significant on a weekly chart, obviously. Um, you can see the last time it did this was way back in, you know, well, basically around this time in 2018, if you can believe it, the 29th of July 2018 was the last time the moving average has crossed. So, you know, we're crossing here again, basically two years later to the upside. You can see how much price action we've had in that time. Very, very significant time frame. Okay. Stochastics are pushing up. So, you know, to me, this is, this is signifying a very, very important shift in dynamic on a very long time frame. So I would be looking for, I still want that pullback though. I'm not, you're not just going to jump in. Ideally, the daily will pull back to around this level here. You know, even if, to test this high here would be fine because that would be around that 138 level, uh, the 38.2 level, sorry, on the, um, Fibonacci retracement, which would be an ideal zone to try and take this long. Okay, so keep an eye on the euro. Set it, um, yeah, set your alerts for it, and probably, like I said, just be mindful that you know it's unlikely to go much higher without having at least a bit of a pullback. So just be careful if you are taking it long that it, it may pull back on you. All right, we will move on to. We'll have a look at the dollar index because it's obviously important relative to the other dollar pairs. You can see, um, yeah, no surprises here to see it's an extraordinary um, support. This is a daily chart. We need to go out a long, long way to see how important this zone actually is. Uh, we'll draw a horizontal line. And this is what I said earlier in the intro. We've been seeing some really, really big moves going into very, very key zones. It's been a fantastic week for trading. But you can see the um, the line that we've got drawn here where the price currently is. It was support there. It was support way back here. It was extraordinary resistance here. This is a weekly chart, remember. So you, know, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 weeks of um, basic resistance here where it could not get past this zone. And it had the 200, it had a lot of traffic in front of it there. It was obviously resistance there as well. So needless to say, this role reversal zone is an extraordinarily important zone. Uh, if it breaks past here and we get a weekly close below this level here, it is significant because the next uh, drop down from here is basically 100 points away and it's starting to get really, really um, grim for dollar base pairs. So we'll keep an eye on this one. It's one of those ones where 
you know, on the weekly, it looks really dire, but we're not, we're not trading that longer time frame, of course. So what we're looking for here is effectively, um, yeah, a change of trend on a smaller time frame. Because it's at a real key um, support level, I'd want to see at least a minimum, probably four hour change of trend. So the more significant the role reversal area, like the more significant the support and resistance, the more, the bigger the time frame that you want the change of trend to be on, because it is a significant zone and you need to see a significant change of trend. Okay, that's the general rule that we apply and it usually works quite well. So what you want to see here, needless to say, um, a series of um, troughs and peaks that are going higher. So we want a trough, we want a, a peak, we want a, a higher trough. So we want to see that lightning bolt effect. We want to see a four hour close above the 20. I would not even consider um, looking at going along on the dollar index or probably any of those dollar based pairs that we talked about until we get a four hour close above this 20 moving average. That should signify uh, a basic change of trend. So we should have the series of higher highs and higher lows at that point. Um, and that would give us a really, really good target. If we can get above the 20, um, it gives us a really, really good target up to the first real support. Uh, we'll probably, uh, that would get us probably to at least the 9580, I would think, in the first instance. That would be our target. So, and the good thing about that trade, if it does uh, eventuate, your stop loss only has to be behind the last swing. So, you know, it's probably a, a two to one risk reward ratio. It wouldn't be a bad one, this one, to certainly get into. But what happens here is going to influence the dollar base pairs. So, you want to keep an eye on this one. Definitely set an alert for above the 95. So, any close above a 95 on a four hour, check this out. Make sure it's above the 20 moving average. And uh, make sure you've got your series of higher highs and higher lows, which I, I would expect you probably will have at that point. All right, we will look at the um, a couple more to look at. We'll look at the S and P five hundred. Uh, you can see here that it's been grinding its way out. We had a bit of weakness last night. Um, we're in the middle of earnings season, okay? So there's no surprises there that um, we're going to get a little bit of volatility in price. Some are reporting really well. Some of them are around expectations and some of them are a little bit disappointing. So a bit of a mixed bag, but we would expect nothing less given that the um, the US situation and the world situation for that matter has not really uh, picked up. So we're just going to wait and see on this one. You know, if you want to trade it and you want to scalp it, uh, potentially you have to go to a, a one hour. Like it, the, the thing is here, you look at it on a daily, it's a mini pullback, a very, very shallow pullback. But if you're scalping, um, you know, it gives you a chance to get in. This is a role reversal zone, right? There, there, make no mistake about that. Even though it's not a um, a lot of touches on it, it certainly is important. You could see that it was resistance here. It was support there. Uh, it was resistance there. It was resistance here. This is a daily chart. So it was resistance basically for a week here. Uh, it's broken through and it's testing it from the top. Okay, so if that was a little bit higher, I'd be a little bit happier. I probably would have been happier if it reached the um, sort of that uh, over 3,300 um, because then it would have been a significant pullback to this level. Uh, with earnings season still uh, running rampant, I'm just a little bit reluctant to take anything longer than really short scalps on this one. Uh, so I would probably stick towards, if you're going to scalp, keep them really, really uh, tight. Go to an hour. So you can see that it's pulled back. There's the same line that we're talking about. It's pulled back um, and basically touched it here. The only way we I would be even contemplating longing, longing this is if it makes a, a lower high, um, then comes back and makes a higher low and gets the lightning bolt effect that we love. I want to see price action. This one probably warrants a one hour. I think a one hour change of trend on this particular indice will be fine. Um, that because it is, you know, you're not going to get big, uh, significant changes of trend when the market is a, a little bit volatile and sideways. So you've got to take what you can get if you want to scalp it. It's not my preferred trade. I wouldn't be jumping in unless the signals were really, really clear on this one. Okay. So just keep an eye on that. All right. Gold, let's talk about the um, the real star of the show. Gold was the, um, it, it got so close to 1900, it wasn't funny. Um, it's <laughs> the promised land, we call it, because we've been hoping it was going to get there for quite some time this year, and it certainly did um, yeah, push the, the big push up. It, it gave you every signal you needed to get in. And I, and I think that's what I really liked about gold and gold this year, in uh, for that matter, it's been technically perfect. It's given everybody, all of the things that we're always looking for to get in. There's been hardly any of these big moves that you would have missed if you follow the standard rules. You've got your series of higher highs and higher lows. You've got your tests of uh, the role reversals and you've got your breaks of the moving averages. So it's been definitely the star of the show. It's been our favorite trade. Where to from here is an interesting one, a little bit like the Euro in that it is at an absolutely significant um, resistance now. Like you've got to go to, you know, you've literally got to go out to a monthly chart to see 
the last time it was up here. Now, the last time gold was pushing this level was way back in 2011, okay? So, and ironically, um, there it is, 2011, July and August 2011, exactly the same time as we are right now. That's what it did only, um, yeah, several or many, many years ago. So I don't have to say the obvious. It's at an extraordinary point of resistance. So it would be, yeah, very, very surprising if it just kept going and broke through without some sort of a retest to a pretty important zone. So, and the important zone we probably want to see now, it wouldn't surprise me to see this pull back to a half decent level, actually. I wouldn't expect that it's going to be a shallow pullback to break this zone. I think it has to be a reasonable pullback to actually get past this zone with any sort of power whatsoever. So, yeah, we'll look out for a roll reversal on this one. Uh, it needs to pull back probably to, at the very, very least, I would have thought, low 1800s. Um, probably maybe 1820 if I pull back to this little area here, which was the beautiful break that um, most people would have caught. Um, that would also coincide with around the 20 moving average. I pull back to there, and I could definitely see it potentially going along and having another test or a serious test at that level. A little bit has to play out before it goes past the 1900, but... Look, it, it can do it. I mean, it, not, nothing's impossible. But for all intents and purposes, this has fulfilled its destiny for what we wanted uh, of it this year. So, you know, rather than going for the big long-term moves, now you probably want to start resorting to the scalping sort of opportunities on this one and start scalping your sort of 40 to $80 at a time. Uh, it's still going to provide good opportunities in that regard because, yeah, it's not going to just sit here at the 1900 I wouldn't imagine. So, Keep an eye out for a pullback, and if we get a pullback and a small change of trend roll reversal at one of these pullbacks, maybe take it back into the longs again. Well, I hope everybody's had a great week's trading. We've seen some really good moves, so hopefully you caught some of those trends, and we've got some good setups for next week as well. So have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you all next week.